All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today's variety review is quite special to me. We're reviewing a variety called Green Michurinska. It's the tree here behind me, and um, I've been quite high on it for a number of years, especially since uh, my friend Kelby, shout out to Kelby Taylor. He's also another collector uh, of figs in Pennsylvania. And he, when he first introduced this variety to people in the United States, um, he's kind of pushed the idea that it's an earlier ripening Adriatic, which would be fantastic if that was true. Um, I think him and I have both sort of, uh, even himself has backtracked on that idea. I sort of have disagreed on, with that idea. Then I've also gone the opposite way and have sort of agreed with him. And I, I just don't really know what to think. Um, the fig changes a lot and figs in general change a lot. As I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware, year to year, even different you know, figs on the same tree in the same year can be very different. Um, so we just need more data. And that's why I'm excited for this review because I, I really, really like this variety so far. And I want to be able to evaluate it more so I can just accurately say, is it one of the best varieties we can grow in a humid place? Is it indeed what Kelby uh, had originally proposed? Um, you know, what is it exactly? Can I recommend it for this person? Can I not recommend it for this person? Um, so there it is. We're, we're just trying to evaluate this fig. Um, and so far, like I said, out of everything I've seen from this fig is it's great. Uh, this is now actually the second main crop we're getting off of this tree. Uh, we did a lot of rivers pruning on some, on a couple of the varieties, not a lot of them probably about three or four of the varieties. It works pretty darn well on some varieties and not very well on maybe one of them. So about three out of the four, I would say was a good success. Um, and this is one of them. So we have a main that ripened earlier, which the birds got most of. Um, wasn't able to really protect the figs, which is a lot going on in my life. A lot of figs also ripening at the same time. And I did the same thing here with um, this Ronde Bordeaux tree. And it probably produced because this variety loves to grow um, and fruit at the same time, it probably produced over 300 figs. And uh, you can see a lot of the fruits on here. We're getting um, great weather for the next week. Um, and so these Ronde Bordeaux figs here that you can see there's a lot on the tree and a lot of them are now starting to swell um, after this, basically the second crop that I have induced. I really have increased my production on this tree because of this technique and talked a lot about it. Um, and it's kind of perfect. You know, I don't really want to get into so many details because this is about, this video is not what that's about, but um, I really have gone into a lot of details about this and basically it's a great way to time your harvest and also increase your production. And it certainly worked out this year, timed it perfect to line up with this weather that we're getting. And usually later in the season, um, the weather is actually a bit drier. September here was probably the worst on record. So it's been a weird year. We've, we've had a lot of bird damage on a lot of the, um, the trees here on the west side of my property wasn't taking care of them and looking after them as much as I, I should have. Uh, then September came and it just rained and rained and rained. I was also away in Italy for two weeks. So, uh, you know, it, we didn't really get a good chance to evaluate um, the green Maturinska. Here's actually a Ronde Bordeaux I picked. Got that one there in my pocket. So we are essentially, like I said, getting this second crop. Um, and it really is a second crop of Maine that you can do this technique. I, I feel pretty confident about saying that, that you can increase your production, time it well. If you do it right, uh, it works. And here it is, it's good results with this. A lot of fruit on here. Um, and we already got a crop of it already. So that's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, here is the thing we're gonna pick. Uh, it looks somewhat dried on the tree. Um, it has been rather cool. And up until I would say today, today's really the first day that we're getting any sort of warm weather. Uh, it's been pretty chilly. Uh, we do have some bird damage on this one here. 
and uh, I guess I could have waited. There's no real rush to pick this, but I wanted to get this video in because I saw the bird damage. And I want to be able to evaluate this before, I don't know, something happens. I'm sure there's plenty more here and if something changes, uh, or I'll always keep continuing getting data from this fig with all the varieties. And then my opinion, of course, changes. So the outside, by the way, we're comparing it to an Adriatic and I don't have one on hand to show you, but it definitely on the outside is very different than a, um, an Adriatic. Different shape. This one has a longer neck, similar stem length, but these are really long necked figs. That it almost looks a bit like the um, Verdino del Nord from Tatiana, but again, different. Um, uh, the Verdino del Nord from Tatiana is actually an Adriatic that has a different shape. And um, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, the Verdino figs in Italy are just basically means green fig. And they're all over Italy. They have, uh, I was told by my friend Ciro when I visited him this year in Italy uh, that every family used to have their own Verdino tree. And Verdino is a synonym of Adriatic. So it's an insanely popular fruit for good reason. And that's, I think, probably what just Verdino del Nord from Tatiana is. It's just another Adriatic, but they're not all created equal. They are different due to mutations and epigenetic changes. And uh, you may even be able to make an argument for, uh, you know, they could be seedlings of each other. Um, so maybe that's what this is. Maybe it is actually an Adriatic, or like at some point maybe mutated. Um, you know, the leaves are definitely different and it's hard to really put a finger on whatever the heck this is. Let me show you the, um, the inside here. I think the proof though really is in the taste uh, to me. It's not just about having a green skinned red interior fig and then that's what makes it an Adriatic. Um, it's more than that. Sorry about the camera there, guys. Yeah. It's getting a little dark. There we go. So to me, I mean, I could very easily see how somebody would mistake it as an Adriatic. And again, colors aside, it's, to me, it's more about the flavor. Does the flavor profile match? And you're looking for something that's, you know, quite jammy. You know, got a good, actually a good sweetness balance, um, maybe even a little acidity um, and has like a, a decent strawberry flavor to it. Here, they're not so intense um, as you might get in California or other places that are really warm and dry, but they're very good. And they are usually intense for what we can grow here. Um, let's try it. So yeah, I mean, that's the crazy thing about it is that this does taste like strawberries. It does taste like an Adriatic. It is actually quite well ripened. Um, I find these taste good even under ripe, just like the Adriatics do. Um, they don't have to be dead ripe. They don't have to be shriveled on the tree. They don't have to be perfect to taste great. Birds love them. You would think that because it's green that the birds wouldn't go after them. It's just not true. Here's the other one here that's definitely less ripe and I bet you it's still going to taste good. Yeah, I mean, quite jammy. There's definitely that intense berry acidity as well. You know, blindfolded, I would be like, ah, oh, that, that could be an Adriatic fig. So I'm really in the camp of what Kelby had originally proposed. And it, it just changes, I think, sometimes fig to fig, year to year. Um, and so that's where I'm at right now with it. And the crazy part about it is he's right too, in that it does ripen earlier than other Adriatics. It's definitely earlier than the JH Adriatic I have. Um, now I wouldn't consider this fig early though in the sense of like, oh, it's gonna ripen alongside, uh, let's see, Ronde Bordeaux or Morwa de Canevo. Those were some of the first figs. Actually, Bar Malone this year were some of the first figs I got to eat. 
Uh, Brianzolo Rosso was another one that was like one of the first ones. Now that could change and we'll see it next year because this thing really has getting some size. It's really hardy. Uh, that's for sure. That's for certain, you know, and that's also another reason why I wanted to review this is because it is so hardy. It's grown so big. It's, you know, it's a great choice for people in colder, shorter season. And also so far, it seems like humid climate. So for me, I'm a big fan of this fig. Um, and we'll have to see. I think really, if, if I'm going to say that this does taste to me just like an Adriatic and it does ripen earlier, how could I not put it among my best ripening figs? Because it, it'll taste great even under ripe. Here's the other thing. Let me, maybe we'll take another one off the tree that's even less ripe. I don't want to be picking my figs early unless I have to, but I mean, these are actually, some of these are actually soft. I mean, that's to me, the best part about the Adriatics in some aspects that I, I've written about this on my blog recently as well, updated the, uh, the article on it. There are just a handful of varieties that will taste great even when under ripe. And because of that, you can pick them before the rains come in and then they do well in humid places. If uh, the fig has to get through the rain and you don't pick it before the rain, then maybe this fig isn't a great choice. I still need more data to confirm that. But if we can have a fig that ripens quick, has a short hang time, or uh, it, it'll just taste good under ripe like this, then uh, you know, to me, I'm like, it's a no brainer. Actually, the hang time is short. Uh, that's a definite, um, it doesn't need much time. Now, the hang time is gonna be longer if you want it perfect. But I actually, I really do. I think this fig is, um, now the more I think about it, it's got everything we pretty much want. And um, yeah, I think it ripens though. I'll just finish off with this. It does ripen maybe around Hardy Chicago. Uh, it ripened around the same time as uh, my Azores Darks, I think this year, maybe a week later. Um, and it's ripening a second main crop now. So that's, I mean, that's pretty impressive, right? Um, yeah. All right. Well, that was the video there, guys. Uh, thanks for watching this one. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. I'm really happy to have this variety, I'm, I'm telling you. And um, hope you guys will grow it. I'm going to definitely be offering cuttings and trees. I even have a potted tree of it to uh, evaluate it more. But I'll probably let that one go or I'll plant it somewhere. And um, yeah, check out some of the other reviews we've done now on the blog. We'll catch you guys for the next video.